All right, the purpose of this video is to very quickly derive a formula telling us the potential energy of an extended rigid body. So we know how to find the gravitational potential energy of point masses, it's just mgy. But what do you do if something is made up of a bunch of point masses distributed through space? This one turns out to be particularly fast. So I'm just going to write down the total gravitational potential energy. So I'll call it PE net. And that's going to be the sum of the potential energies of all these individuals. I put y equals zero right here. And then the height of mass one is going to be y1. The height of mass two is y2 and so on and so on. And I've broken it into n different particles. And then I can just apply the point mass formula to each of them. So I'm going to have the sum of all the mi's times g times the y coordinate of each of those mi's. Now, when you have a sum where you have a common factor in every single term in the sum, you can factor it out. So that means the g can come out in front. And then I end up with this familiar expression, the sum of mi times yi. That looks like part of the center of mass formula for the center of mass y coordinate. So here's a little reminder. The y coordinate of the center of mass is one over the total mass times the sum of all the mi's multiplying the yi's. Well, that means that the sum I'm looking at is m multiplied by the center of mass y coordinate. Let's go ahead and replace the sum with that. So I end up with my net potential energy gravitational for an extended body is g times the total mass times the center of mass y coordinate, which if I turn it around a little bit is the total mass of the object times g times the y coordinate of the center of mass. So cool, for an extended object, all I have to do is identify where their center of mass is and what the total mass is, and I can tell you based on where it is in space what its gravitational potential energy is, and this allows us to solve problems. So let's apply this to a simple example. I have a stick of mass 10 kilograms, and we're assuming it's uniform in its thickness. That puts the center of mass right at the geometric center. And it has a length of 2.5 meters. It's standing up on one end, and then it starts tipping over. So if it was a very smooth surface, the bottom would actually start to slip out under this thing. So I had to say, let's assume that doesn't happen. And that puts us in pure rotation, which makes the problem easier to analyze. So we're rotating about this axis right here. How are we going to approach this thing? Well, as the stick is falling, the center of mass is getting lower and lower and lower. And eventually the center of mass is on the ground. That's where I'm going to put my origin of coordinates. So I'm going to say y equals zero is there. And that means my initial y coordinate for the center of mass was 1.25 meters. And then I should be able to use a conservation of energy approach to figure out how much rotational kinetic energy is in this thing right before it slams into the ground. And that's part A. Compute the angular speed when it hits the ground. Okay. In our initial state, everything is totally stationary, but our center of mass is above the zero y coordinate. I guess I'll call it y initial for the center of mass. In the final state, the y coordinate of the center of mass is zero, so I don't have to write that at all. There's no translational motion happening. This is just pure rotation, so I write one half i omega squared. All right, to finish the problem, you need to know that the moment of inertia of a rod rotating about its end is one third ml squared. And you just look these formulas up whenever you need them. And I'll just do that as a side calculation up here. So I have one third times the mass, which was 10 kilograms times the length squared. And I get a total moment of inertia of 20.8 kilogram meters squared, just keeping three sig figs. Okay, so back to part A, I'm trying to solve for omega and I suppose I'll write it symbolically. I'm gonna multiply both sides by two, divide by I and square root the result, so. Let's get that done. I have 2mg initial y coordinate of the center of mass all divided by i and then square rooted. So let's plug it in. 2 times a mass of 10 kilograms, 9.8 for g. Initial y coordinate of the center of mass is 1.25. It's all divided by my moment of inertia, which I just computed as 20.8. And I'll get my final angular speed. And I get 3.43 radians per second when it hits the ground. Part B is a question about how this angular motion relates to the linear motion at the tip of the rod. So I want to figure out 
if it's moving at 3.43 radians per second, just how fast is that tip of the rod moving? So what's V right there? So that's like a tangential velocity. And that is related to the rotational velocity by the little formula V equals R omega. And the distance from the rotation axis, that's R, and that's going to be 2.5 meters here. So 2.5 meters times 3.43 radians per second. You might have to be reminded that radians are unitless, so you can disappear them whenever you like. And when I check my units, I get meters per second out of this. So crunching the numbers real quick, I get 8.58 .8 meters per second for the speed at the tip. Um, so just so this is totally clear, the speed at half the distance from the rotation axis would be half as much. So every little bit of this rod is moving at a different speed. And the closer you get to the rotation axis, the slower that motion is. And part C concerns something that I've always found to be fascinating about this problem. It just occurred to me one day in class to compare this to a free fall of an object that starts at the original height of two and a half meters. So I'm gonna put a mass up here and just fall straight down to the same height and find V final for that. So part C says, compare the speed at the tip with the speed of a mass experiencing a two and a half meter free fall from rest. And your intuition might tell you these two things should be the same. And they actually turn out not to be. And the way they're not the same is actually pretty surprising. So let's find the impact speed of this mass. And I'll just take an energy approach to this. So I have like an MGY for the initial state equals one half MV squared for the final state. It doesn't matter what the mass is. Solve for V and you get square root of 2GY. So that's the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 2.5. And when I crunch the numbers, I get 7 meters per second. And what's surprising to me anyway is that it turns out the tip of this rod falling over without slipping in this pure rotation is actually moving faster than what you would get for an object just falling straight down through the same distance.